Thank you, Donald. It's good to see you, and I really appreciate the uh, introduction. So, so thank you. Uh, it is good to see you, Donald, and thank you uh, to Elwin and to Zenny as well for for hosting today. And it really is a pleasure to be with you. It's it's uh, 4 a.m. 4:20 here uh, where I am on the uh, west coast of California in the United States. You are most of you are nine hours ahead of me, so I will be working today to catch up. <laughs> but it is uh, a pleasure to be with you. Just checking uh, before I go that my, both the, the uh, slide and the video are working for you. You can see those. Uh, yes, James, you may continue. Okay. We can see your slide, yeah? Perfect, thank you. So um, as, as uh, Elwin was recounting the uh, gathering around this week, it just reminds me of how much um, uh, your work and news of your work spreads around the globe and encourages child and youth care workers all around the globe. Um, your dedication, your persistence in, in the face of challenges, as, as Elwin uh, mentioned, um, is an is a example and model for many. And so thank you for showing up today and for showing up every day in your, your work. It uh, means a lot for those you serve, and it means a lot for those that uh, watch and hear of your dedication around the world. So thank you for that. Our, our theme today is kindness, and we often uh, hear of something like you see on the screen of, you know, an encouragement to be kind. Uh, we often uh, think of kindness as a core part of our work. And sometimes the idea of being kind is often trivialized, or uh, we say it so much that we forget what the meaning is. And so today we want to take a few moments to think about what it is to be kind in the context of child and youth care in our work um, to ourselves, to our colleagues, other people on this call, and those we work alongside each day, and to the young people that we're working alongside. And so that's what we'll be unfolding and thinking about um, as we do that. If I notice a question or comment in the chat, uh, it would be great to respond to it as it comes. And also, as you saw on the agenda, uh, Zinni and Elwin will be um, guiding us through uh, the question and answer uh, in just a bit as well. When I think of kindness, um, I think back to this glass of water. Um, on the very first child and youth care team that I was a part of, there was a woman uh, named Denise who did a little act of kindness uh, to me. And it was simply handing me a cup of water but I want to tell you just a little bit about it. Uh, it was the beginning of our uh, season. Uh, school was out. We were getting ready to have um, young people with us for the full day. And uh, we had spent um, several hours building um, a swing, uh, play equipment, clearing the land, and um, having a place where kids could come. We were tired. It had been a long day. And we were really trying to just finish up. In fact, if I'm honest about it, it was taking a lot longer than we had anticipated it would take us to um, get this task done. And as I was carrying a big bag of cement uh, from one area to another as part of our cleanup, I set it down and turned around. And my friend, my colleague, Denise, was standing right there with a tray with some cups of water and handed me one. A very simple act, but in that moment, um, I felt uh, cared for, um, important, uh, valued, and it was all from that very simple act. 
it was, uh, think about what was important about that act. It was uh, timing. It was a very important need in that, <laughs> that small moment. And it was very thoughtful. And also, no one asked her to do it. Now, backing up, thinking about it, Denise had seen everybody working hard. She was working hard herself. And uh, rather than just get herself something uh, to drink, uh, she got something for everyone and spread it around. And no one had asked her to do that. A simple act of kindness. And to me now, years later, that moment still sticks with me. And so what is it in a small act like that that makes makes it so memorable and so um, important? Because one of the things we want to do is fill our young people in our lives with those small acts. Well, let's look at the word of kindness. Um, when we think of where it comes from in English, we have the word kin, um, as in many languages. Um, Kin meaning uh, somebody who's related to us. We use the word um, next of kin or a kin or that person is kinfolk, um, related to me. And so even the root word of kindness has to do with a close familial or tribal um, relation. And then we also use the word kind as in trying to define something like um, it's that kind of thing or th they're that kind of person. They might have a certain characteristic. Um, we group things together and say that's that kind. Um, sometimes in a very um, positive way as in human kind, even in that phrase, um, as we group humans together and talk about our shared experience. And so we can use kind in that way. And the way that we're thinking about today is kindness or kind as compassionate, loving, full of tenderness, friendly. Um, this is a common definition when I ask people, what does kind mean to you is doing good to somebody on purpose, is deliberately doing good. And notice here in the bottom of the screen, when we add kindness, it implies in their action. There's a quality of it. So when we think of kindness in child and youth care, it's about doing good to people, showing compassion. It's an act. And so I'd like you to get ready in the chat because I'm going to show a few pictures here, and I'd like just your response to it. Um, of what you see happening. So when we look at this picture here, um, what's happening here? What do you see? What do you notice in this picture? And do you think this is an act of kindness? Give you a moment just to comment there. What do you see happening? And is this kindness? Wonderful, some comments coming in, sharing. Being kind and sharing. Sharing is an act of kindness, yeah. Uh, somebody says she is being kind and sharing. Generosity is a word here. Yes, there's a, a generous, a giving. And so sharing, um, we're, we don't know the context of this picture. Um, but this boy did not have something, and the individual in the red shirt um, seems to be giving and showing generosity. And uh, Isabel, I like your comment there. Uh, she seems, uh, appears to be happy to share. There's a smile with it. Lizzie says the smile on her face shows that it is okay to do so. Yes. And we don't know the context here of perhaps this boy did have an ice cream and maybe it dropped. And she saw an opportunity here um, to share and to supply. Now, I always wonder, is she giving him the whole ice cream cone or is she offering him one lick? 
So there may be a, a, a limit to the, to the sharing as well. But I agree with many of you, um, as Bertha says here, giving what you have to another person. Uh, it's a gift. It's unexpected. And um, we appreciate her smile in there in her act of doing that. Here's another picture which brings together both the idea of kin, that relationship, and kindness. And this one reminds us that we are dependent on kindness for survival from the very beginning of our days. So here, a young mother holding her baby, um, keeping it clean, keeping it warm, expressing uh, to it love um, are all simple acts of kindness and the same as in the last picture a giving of what this mother has um, a generosity um, uh, expecting nothing in return uh, an emptying of of oneself for another And what do you see in this picture? Do you see any, do you notice any aspects of kindness here? This is a, a young woman uh, learning and attempting uh, to surf in the ocean, um, as some of you may do in Cape Town, as they do here in California. I see some comments here. Uh, guidance. So the, uh, man here, uh, perhaps a child and youth care worker, is giving some guidance. Um, Isabel says she's dependent on kindness for survival. Yes, from our last picture, and maybe perhaps from this one uh, uh, as well in the ocean. Uh, helping and supporting, yes. Um, Lizzie, interesting comment, supporting you as you, as you move on the struggle to learn, yes. If you look closely, there appears to be a smile on her face here as well. Um, so she seems to be enjoying it, but she's definitely getting some support. Um, Isabel says uh, mentorship. Herberg says patience. Uh, Susan, interesting uh, thought there about um, both helping and uh, focusing on making it safe and giving support. So those, those acts, we would definitely call acts of confidence. Um, giving support and a helping hand with confidence, assurance, reassurance. Um, yes, also there are words of encouragement um, there as well. So support and encouragement. And so in this series of pictures, we see several things. We see generosity and a giving of something material. Here, an expression of love um, and a reminder that we depend on kindness for survival. And here, um, not something tangible or material, but something in the form of support, encouragement, safety, and guidance, as many of you have mentioned. Um, Donald, yes, a sense of presence. Um, from the, the gentleman, he definitely um, attending and, and present for her in this moment. And yet giving her some space to um, try and attempt and negotiate this as well and learn. So thank you for your comments on that. I really appreciate what people are uh, saying. Daniela points out that him showing confidence in her helps her develop and express her own confidence as well, wonderful perspective. This picture to me is uh, more personal. These are my two sons, uh, Andrew in the front and Alec in the back. And um, this was in a washroom where um, when my, uh, when Andrew in the front, who's in the front was, was this age, uh, this is a while ago, they're, um, they're both in uh, their teens now. Um, teen years, uh, Andrew was a little sensitive to noise and didn't like loud noises. And in this washroom, the uh, hand dryer was an air blower 
uh, you have to blow hot air on your hands to dry them off and it was very loud. And so we were in there together and as I turned around, um, saw this little moment unfold here where Alec uh, cups his hands over Andrew's ears and helps him um, accomplish drying his hands. And I don't know what you feel or, or notice from this picture, but it's a very quick and very simple act of kindness um, in that moment. And um, you know, almost fleeting. And I think some things that stood out to me was um, there's nothing given in return. Uh, there was no expectation. And uh, it really supported and equipped the other person. Uh, some comments around this, around protection, um, caring, um, safety, and love. Yes, Daniela, much like uh, child and youth care workers do, think on their feet in the moment, right? Um, and of course, there's many solutions to this. He could have kept his hands wet. He could have wiped them on his uh, jacket, perhaps, but yet uh, brother here uh, helped him out um, in that moment. I like Lizzie's comment here. I know your need, so I protect you. That's a very important idea around this theme of kindness is that it takes knowing the person and uh, tuning in to exactly what that need is so that it can be met. So um, let's look a little bit deeper um, at this idea of kindness. And I chose a simple passage from a, a recent book called Deep Kindness um, to guide us in this and to think a little bit about this idea. And so I'd like to just share the, the words from the, uh, the uh, quote here and, and unfold them a little bit. Um, the writer says, deep kindness overcomes selfishness and fear. The sort of generosity that expects nothing in return. The unconditional care that's given despite a person's shortcomings or ugliness. And I'll give a side comment here that in that word ugliness, how I read that is the ugliness of uh, the trauma, the pain, the uh, burden that the person is uh, carrying or has been given in life. Not, not uh, the appearance, but um, their situation. The commitment to consistent, thoughtful action that proves over time that your giving is not dependent on circumstance or convenience. I think there's a beauty in this uh, statement here is that it is generosity. It is unconditional. It has nothing to do with if a person deserves um, kindness or not. Um, and it's a commitment over time. There's a consistency, a continued giving. And the reason for that is that it shows that it's not about, as the writer here says, circumstance or convenience. This is an interesting concept that when we first meet a young person in child and youth care, often our acts of kindness are explained by, well, it's your job to do that. Um, you have to do it. Um, you're just doing that because of your role. And it takes repeated acts of kindness over time, again and again, day after day, to convince somebody it's not because I might be you know, employed to do this or that it's because of my role, but it's because I really see you and um, want to give this generosity to you, whether it's a physical thing or a moment of support that that's there. Our writer uh, continues here, um, the deep kindness requires something more than politeness or even an honest desire to help. It requires careful self-reflection, profound courage, a willingness to be humbled and hard earned social and emotional skills. 
So notice here, it's not just about being nice. When we say be kind or do acts of kindness, it's not about just being nice, just being polite. Sometimes we're nice and polite by avoiding hard conversations. And sometimes that's a very unkind thing to do because then the young person or a colleague or even in our own self-reflection, we don't get the feedback that we need. So sometimes kindness is not easy or uh, gentle. Sometimes kindness is hearing something hard to hear. Um, and so because of that, it requires a lot of self-reflection on our part. Self-reflection to think, to consider, to look at that need, to ask, is it the right time? Is it the right person? Am I the best to intervene? Those sorts of questions. Now, why do you think it requires things like courage and humility and social and emotional skills? I'm specifically interested in why do you think, and you might add if you have a thought in the chat, why does kindness require courage and humility on our part? Kindness sounds like an easy thing to give or an easy thing to do, but courage would sound like, well, maybe bravery uh, or risk or things like that. Let's see some comments here. Um, empathy, um, listening and assisting. Uh, Charlie says, being in tune with your own triggers. Yes, so self-reflection uh, and takes courage to look at ourselves and see where our uh, triggers, our sensitive areas, our uh, thoughts might be. It's a, uh, like another comment here. It could be because it means putting needs after the needs of others. Yes, I think of the uh, girl with the ice cream, right? She's giving up something to give to that other. And so that self-reflection, that willingness to be humbled is a, is a moment of saying, I'm putting you before me and I'm putting me next, you know, or my need delayed. Um, Lizzie, that's a very important comment there. Asking the question, and this is where courage comes into place and where sometimes we are humbled. Um, will the person accept my kindness or will they reject it? Right? So if we get up the courage to give something, to offer this act or word or object, and it's rejected, um, that takes courage because it's a, re it's a rejection of something personal to us. Herberg says, kindness opens you up to be vulnerable. Beautiful way to say that. Nika says, I think because it requires someone to drop some of their defenses, being vulnerable to someone else and one's own sphere of judgment. Yeah. And so in these comments, you can really see how some key elements of deep kindness involve self-reflection, knowing ourselves, courage, humility, and social emotional skills. And we'll continue here. It says deep kindness is the byproduct of a whole lot of emotional intelligence coming together in concert to perform an action that may look externally simple, but quite internally complicated. Or I might add the word complex here. So let's take this apart. Real kindness requires an emotional intelligence from us. And what is that? We talk about uh, intelligence of smarts. Uh, we talk about intelligence maybe physically um, as an athlete. But emotional intelligence uh, is really these three things here. Um, emotional perception, as you see on the left, the ability to notice, 
um, to see somebody, um, to um, pick up on the cues that people give us, sometimes facial expressions, body language, um, interpreting words, all of that work that we do to perceive and to notice and see. Looks like we lost James. Yeah, I thought it was only me. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, there he is back again. Yes, yes, okay. uh, James, Am we I lost back? you. You back? Oh, yes, okay. thanks. You you may continue. Good. It said I dropped, so you got right back in there. All right, let me reshare that. You should be able to see the arrows again. Perfect. Yes, we with you. Thank All you. All right, and I see my chat open. Okay, perfect. Glad that was a very short interruption for us. Um, reflection is that moment of where we consider and make decisions about what to do and um, evaluate. And this is where that self-reflection happens and reflection about what we're going to do. And finally, a third piece of regulation. Uh, that is our emotional control. Now, um, thinking of the young people with ice cream, uh, if there was an adult there, perhaps a child youth care worker, and that young child dropped their ice cream, there might be an impulse from the adult to replace it, to clean it up, to... Um, maybe in some situations, uh, correct the child. Um, and self-regulation would be uh, limiting that impulse and not responding to impulsively. So we have self-regulation, but also co-regulation. So the words or the um, emotion that we emit uh, to help somebody else regain control. So when we think of emotional intelligence and kindness, it takes emotional perception, reflection, and regulation of both ourselves and others in these moments. Uh, Felicity says, don't judge others because of their background. Yes. And uh, another says, to be committed no matter the behavior or the rejections. Uh, perfect comments. Our writer here says, uh, in conclusion of his uh, comment here, and, and then we'll move um, on from it, it. He says, this is the kind of kindness. It's the kind that overcomes generational hate and champions justice. This is the type of kindness we must teach and explore for ourselves if we are ever going to live in a world that is less divisive and more compassionate. And so here um, you see that kindness is powerful. Uh, it, it's much more than just uh, sort of the trite or, um, you know, as we might say, oh, be kind today or um, spread kindness. You know, those are important things. But when we look at true kindness, kindness that heals, kindness that helps people survive, kindness that, as many of you have put in the comments, like meets needs, builds confidence, um, expresses love. Uh, those are the things that overcome all the evil in the world and, and pain and, uh, and are part of our work. And so, uh, as Zinni says, kindness has a long future. Yes. And each one of us here, each one of you, are a part of continuing that and expressing it and looking for it. In fact, that's one question that I want um, to encourage you to think about that perhaps in our question and answer uh, moments, in, in a few moments, 
think about what act of kindness might you prepare for today? Um, now, we don't know until we get to that moment what will be required of us, but what might we be thinking about that we'll be able to engage in today? So to get us thinking in that direction, um, here's a list of positive childhood experiences. Now, perhaps you've heard of adverse childhood experiences or ACEs or ACEs. And when we talk about adversity in childhood, we're thinking about abuse, neglect, and uh, lack of supply of needs, um, bullying, um, not feeling safe in your neighborhood, um, things like that. And in research, we find that the more adversity you have, the more struggles with health later in life you might experience. But the same is true with positive childhood experiences. The more we have of them, the more equipped we are later in life to have positive mental health and uh, better health conditions. And so just look at this list. I won't read through them, but when you look at them through the lens of kindness, you see that every one of them is filled with small acts of kindness that one person, sometimes an adult, sometimes a peer, might demonstrate to an individual. So when we look at research that says the ability to talk with family about feelings, well, family here will interpret as whatever family you're a part of in this moment, whether it's birth family or um, those that are your caregivers uh, surrounding you in that moment, um, the ability for one of those people to stop and to listen, an act of kindness, um, is an equipping factor or a positive experience that bolsters health and life. We think of an experience of belonging in school um, in the middle of the list there. That could be acts of kindness, like somebody saying hello as they pass someone. A peer inviting another into a game, uh, you know, on the uh, field. Um, someone sitting with somebody, perhaps at a mealtime, that's been left by themselves. That's where belonging in school comes from, those small acts that people do of kindness for one another. And so I show this list to just say that, you know, we know what healthy childhood development requires. We know what positive experiences are in childhood. But when we take it down to its very simple roots, it's one act of kindness built on another act of kindness and another, and another, and together that supports the development of a healthy child. So I want to start to um, sum up here as uh, we get toward the question of asking you um, what sort of acts of kindness might you prepare for today or any other questions you have about what we've talked about um, as well. Um, let me just notice some of the comments here. An act of kindness should be genuine, expecting nothing in return, be selfless, yes. Now, um, definitely. And also a comment, so many of the children we work with have so little in this list, uh, looking back at the positive list easy to write a negative childhood experiences list, definitely. And so this uh, becomes both a, a challenge for us to say, let's try to provide these things. Um, when somebody misses or loses this experience, we can continue to strive and work toward providing it. And um, knowing that uh, we might not be able to provide all of these for every child, but we can provide some, and uh, that's an important part of our work and our calling. So let's look, kind of summarize here and look at the complexity of kindness. It starts with being kind to ourselves. 
Um, if we don't take care of ourselves with kindness, we will have nothing to give to other people. And so that kindness uh, sometimes is rest. Sometimes it is eating well. Sometimes it is enjoying ourselves uh, in, in a, a moment away uh, from stress, um, whatever that might be. Um, but we have to learn to deal with ourselves with kindness. Sometimes that includes forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness for things we've done or things we've missed. Uh, sometimes it's giving ourselves the grace to struggle and to stumble uh, when we're trying. Uh, those, those acts of kindness begin with ourselves. From there, um, kindness is very situational. Um, it depends on the moment. It depends on the person. It depends on the need that the person has. And so we can never, it, it's not like we can have a list of kind acts and say this applies in all situations. It depends. And that's why so much emotional intelligence is required. Uh, or to put it in other words, why so much of our perception and noticing needs, reflecting on them and acting on them is an ongoing requirement. Um, third here, kindness is an action. Uh, we have uh, phrases that we say, like when somebody has lost, we say, oh, my thoughts are with you. Um, or I'm offering my thoughts and prayers. Or, I'm, I'm lifting you up in my thoughts. Right? Those are good things to do. And those can be very meaningful and very encouraging. But real kindness is about action, about doing something. And it, sometimes that action is an expression. Um, and so we just want to remember that kindness is a movement and action. Um, looking at some of the, the co couple comments here before these last two bullets. Um, kindness can help those with negative childhood experiences to heal by performing acts of kindness. Beautiful, Richard. And Isabel says, it's often easy to show forth kindness toward people and difficult toward self. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, Isabel. Um, sometimes we are so giving as child and youth care workers, that it becomes our nature to be generous and, and to care for others. And sometimes that's at the expense of ourselves. And um, if we're going to be in this for the long term, we definitely have to remedy that and uh, take care of ourselves. Um, the salient says kindness is to work as a team uh, to build relationship with our children as we are child and youth care workers. Yes, kindness with one another. It's our team. All right, so our fourth comment here is that, or uh, point here is that kindness has the potential to build trust. So every act of kindness adds up and over time builds trust. But I wanna offer one warning here. Acts of kindness, especially to kids who have so little and who have been mistreated and who have had disappointment in life. Kindness can bring out suspicion, uh, maybe hesitancy, maybe concern, sometimes outward behavior and anger at the person giving kindness. Well, why would that be the case? Can you think of why kindness might bring suspicion or concern from somebody. And perhaps, and we'll, I'll notice some of the comments coming in, perhaps somebody that is shown kindness for the first time might wonder what you're after with them. What are you going to require back? because they've never experienced this unconditional kindness here. Uh, 
Uh, Richard says, when it's being thrown back into your face with negativity. Uh, for people, Donald says, who have not experienced kindness, it might be received with suspicion. Someone here says, uh, they, you thinking you might want something in return. Uh, yes, Graham, uh, why are you giving me kindness? What do you want from me? Right? Those are exactly the kind of suspicions that we might rise in giving kindness. And so just a reminder, when we get that, engage in that self-reflection. Remind yourself this is, um, you're in this for consistency over time. And we can prove to a child, as um, one of the comments here uh, said, if you keep practicing kindness, it becomes a norm. Uh, good to do this with children all the time. Oh, so a good comment here. Lawrence says, uh, kindness is putting one brick on top of another, on top of another, and another. Alessego, uh, the child that would have trust issues because of his or her past experience. Yeah. Kids are looking at us through what they've experienced in the past. Herberg, we're taught from young that life is about give and take supply and demand. So never expect something unconditional. Yes, that's how many of us uh, experience, especially those early years and how difficult it can be. Uh, Ropa, uh, they may have had to pay back for every act of kindness that was shown to them before. Yes. So a reminder of why that suspicion and, and concern can come up so fast when we are kind. Nazamenga uh, says kindness is deeper. It feels good in a way. Um, for example, if you're assisting someone, uh, a child, you kind of sleep peacefully. Nice feeling. Perfect. Well, and a reminder here that kindness in its absolute purest form is unconditional. We receive so much back from our work. The smile that someone gives is a reward for us. Uh, seeing somebody make a better choice in the way that they're living and engaging with others is a reward for us. But we can expect none of that. When we give, it has, as we might say, no strings attached, no expectation of return. And everything on top of that becomes extra. Um, yeah, uh, comment here, Charlie says uh, a child can be scared of rejection as we come in and out of their lives as a child and youth care worker, for sure. Felicity says many children um, who've experienced a bad childhood, or at least some of them, don't heal or forget easily. So as she says here, we need to remember uh, to interpret their behavior in light of that. So yes, so as we move to a time of questions uh, and wrap up, I want to leave you with this thought here um, to summarize everything we've talked about today. An act of kindness creates a shift, a shift of perspective, a shift of connection, maybe even the shift of a life from a primal to a powerful state. It can be a pause in the rush and the noise, which says to the child, you are seen and there's a reason to hope. And so take that to heart and to mind as you um, engage in your situations and your, your day together. So I'll turn it uh, over to Erwin and Zenny in just a second here. Um, as we look at these uh, other comments coming in, um, acts of kindness can make the world a happier place for everyone. They boost confidence and control happiness and optimism. Um, they encourage others to repeat that, and that contributes to a more positive community. Yeah, so, so true there.
So as we're on our agenda and our time, I'll uh, pass it back uh, to, I think it was Elwin and to Zinni uh, for a guided time of uh, response and um, remain here as well for questions. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, James, uh, for sharing with us. Uh, to be kind to ourselves, our colleagues, and the young people. It is indeed uh, already an interactive session. And uh, one of the key points you reminded us of our calling as child and youth care workers, uh, it sounds like it's a integral part. It should be the ingredient that we should have to be kind. Uh, Zeni, would you like to come in and uh, comment and also lead us with the questions, please? Yes, thank you. Um, just to say as well, uh, uh, James, I think you, you've chosen a topic that I think is so powerful for Child Care Workers Week for us, because I think that every single person here is going to go back and, and practice an act of kindness, of course, many acts of kindness, but even if everyone did one, can you imagine the numbers of children in South mm -hmm. Africa that have been affected by your by your presentation? I just want to say as well to you that that we have uh, um, people in in watch groups. They're sitting in groups around, so you're you're speaking to more than 150 uh, people mm -hmm. uh, in this in this uh, uh, webinar. So thank you for that. I see there's one interesting comment here, question here that we'd like you to, to respond to, which is from Makana. He says, "Why? Uh, uh, what do you do in a situation where your kindness is misunderstood? And he, in his example, he's saying that they, the, the child that you're kind to might think that uh, uh, you like them more than the others and expect more from you. Uh, that's one example. I know that I had some someone always tell me as a child, don't make, make sure that people don't take your kindness to be a weakness. They'll take a chance with you because you're being kind. How do we how do we manage those situations? Maybe you have some insight on that to share with us. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Zenny, for your comments and excited um, to hear of watch groups and and. Uh to catch the vision with you of the, <laughs> the spark of this spreading yeah. as everyone goes about their work. So such a good question and especially um, around our kindness being misunderstood or uh, taken advantage of. Um, a few things come to mind. One is, is it's a that's the opportunity to engage in that self-reflection to start with. And ask ourselves, um, do I, is what I did a uh, cause for misinterpretation, or am I being, am I being fair and and firm in what I'm doing as well? Um, so there is that moment of self-reflection. Um, also, we have no control over how things are interpreted and understood, and so realizing that that's okay. Uh, somebody misunderstands it for this moment, well, I will be consistent and do something again. And it, there's a pattern over time that can communicate a lot. Sometimes it requires a word of clarification. Um, oh, no, I'm not expecting anything back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or um, I didn't mean that, um, you know, might be a word of clarification. We're being kind by accepting uh, uh, overlooking a behavior you know for a moment might be an act of kindness but we also want to be firm and consistent in our expectations and so uh, we might say i'm not you might clarify especially with a teenager in the example from makana um, i'm not saying this is okay to do right? we're going to get together and do our activity right now, um, it doesn't mean the expectations change for next time, mm -hmm. right? But come in now and join us. 
That might be some words of how that act of kindness could look in that moment. Um, so our words can help clarify some of those mis misunderstandings. I think as um, and part of uh, what Zinni added to the question is um, kindness does not mean an absence of being firm. Two, we can have limits, we can have rules, we can have expectations, you know, around safety and relationship and getting along as a group, right, that are important. Um, we can be both kind and firm. So kindness does not mean uh, no limits or no rules or overlook everything. But we can kindly say, um, sometimes even holding somebody, let me say this, sometimes even holding somebody accountable could be an act of kindness. So if somebody's bullying or hurting someone else, so I might say something like, um, I respect you too much to let you treat somebody else like that. Mm -hmm. Or that's not how we treat each other here in this house together where we live, right? So even in those moments where we have to hold a firm boundary and it might get difficult, it can still be said in a tone of kindness and belief in that other person, if that makes sense mm -hmm. as well. So I think that's a good question, especially in the context of teenagers and understanding and communication. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that 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 James, you're talking a lot about about acts and action. You talked about tone, but I think that what you've been saying so much now is about the consideration and choice of words that we need to think carefully about how we choose our words and how to to express them so that it so that we are as well understood as we could. It's 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 fascinating because you're talking to a group of people here who come from 11 different official languages in South Africa. And I wonder if they would like to also come on board and share some of the words they think are good words that express uh, kindness or uh, can express uh, uh, their kindness in ways that would be uh, special to the children that they work with. Because I'm hoping that we're going to have some questions and you're going to raise, raise hands. There are uh, uh, some other comments, but I think you could, uh, the, Donald is saying that kindness is what James has just done to South Africa. Sharing your knowledge and experience is a kindness to us. And as I said, it's a spark. We will, we will take this forward. You know, I think uh, child and youth care workers are eager to have presentation. Here's one that says kindness reminds me so much of the Ubuntu within us. Mm -hmm. There's a, an African expression of, yeah. of, of kindness. Um, uh, before we go on to the other comments, would anybody like to ask a question? You can just put your camera on so we can see you as well. I think we'd like to have some more um, questions, not just only comments. Lizzie, would you like to, you know, would you like to actually, you've got a, a, a comment here, would you like to share? Could you speak to it? Thank you, Lizzie. Hi, Lizzie. We can't hear you. You're muted, Lizzie. Even though Lizzie's got the picture of our our hero of kindness right behind her. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> wonderful arch. Yes, that's that. That is my my reminder all the time. I think um, our re profession requires us to use our human self. And so it's so important that we start with ourselves and give our, our own self um, moments of kindness. And yeah. um, just to say in this time <laughs> uh, of my own healing, um, it was difficult because I'm somebody that just gives it out all the time. It was so difficult to to re to receive it. Like a, sometimes it can be overwhelming as as, as well because um, maybe that has been something that was missing. And uh, mm -hmm. I think in your presentation to us is that 
uh, our young people are missing this. They're missing this this moments of kindness, um, and 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 need it so much. And so I think it's really important that we're starting with ourselves, taking care of ourselves. And so we are filled to be able to fill um, our young people with this kindness. Um, this is a very beautiful topic for me because I think it's important. It's very important. Um, because as Zeni said, it, it produces that, that hope as well for our young people. Yeah. Thank you, that's it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, James, I hope we haven't lost you, just your picture. Could we have lost James? I think we have. Um, anybody else wants to have a comment in the middle uh, at the moment while we try and see if uh, if Michael can try and get uh, James back on? Anybody want to make a comment? Yes. Um, Go ahead. You can show yeah. your face, Donald. That would be nice. If you can. Yeah, I'm trying. It disappointed me the last time. Yeah. Okay, can you see me better this yes. time? Yes, we can see you, Donald. Yes, yeah. I, I wanted um, to ask James to talk a little bit about who, 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 what it does to children and youth when the child and youth care workers uh, show an act of kindness to them. So, taking into consideration that they have gone through a number of challenges in their lives. Thank you. Yeah, good question, Donald. I think one of the one of the um, words that comes to mind is that it is a a contradictory experience or an experience in contradiction. It's not, a real act of kindness is not what a mistreated child expects. They expect what they've had before and so when we cook a meal and sit with them or we listen in a time of complaint or sadness or madness um, it gives an experience that's different than what they've had before and that's where that seed of hope comes from is that my life could be different my belief in pe what people are especially adults, could be different when they experience that true act of kindness um, with them. So even in that suspicion and defensiveness against it, uh, sometimes that's a real sign to us that well, we're giving them something different than they've had before. So I'll be patient with them and, um, and, and persistent uh, because it's meaning something. Now, the more we get uh, in tune with their need, um, the more that act of kindness will communicate that. So we can think of kindness in general as just how we treat people with kindness. You know, we hold a door for someone. We, we, uh, you know, have have a dish for them at the meal um, prepared, or, or we say hello and greet somebody with a smile. Those are all general acts of kindness but when we get uh, tuned in to somebody's real need you know, maybe to be heard maybe to um, help them express something maybe it's to finish a, a game or a piece of schoolwork that they have and practical help you know or or to care for somebody when they are injured and, and to to clean them up um, you know, and, and help them attend to a scraped knee or something like that, uh, you know, that need becomes very situational and very tuned in to what, what that moment is for them. So it can communicate even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, some interesting questions and comments on the chat box. I want to say that Simon Peter, welcome to him. He is our uh, Fite Africa a partner in Kenya, he's here and he asks the question, what would one say about kindness and the changing world 
for example, insecurity, terrorism, and raising, of course, our, 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 our kindness in, in, in refugee situations. That was one. Yeah. And there are a few others here. Like, how do you show kindness to someone who is being unkind to others? You know, uh, uh, so, and we've got someone who's got a hand up. Do you want to take those? Okay. Yes, and then we, we will get the person. It's Ropa who's got a hand up, I think. So she can sure, also that ask. Let's hear another voice. That sounds good. As Simon's question about, uh, you know, the state of the world, the world is not a kind world. When you look We've lost you. We've lost James again, but while he is going to okay. Okay, you're back, you're back. Sorry. Great. Go ahead. I'm not sure why it's doing that. It says there's been a problem, but you'll re-enter. So right. I'm trusting I'll re-enter. I, I think um Simon's question is so important as we look at insecurity and terrorism and insecurity around housing and around food and especially in situations where people are fleeing um, terrorism and war and things like that. <clears throat> Acts of kindness are not always uh, gentle. Sometimes an act of kindness is valor and protection and standing up for somebody's rights and fighting even in the sense of for uh, the needs of somebody to be protected and, and to get them out of a difficult and harmful situation. So kindness is not always soft. It's not always uh, gentle, it can be a firm standing up for somebody and their rights and, and helping them. Um, I think the fight against terrorism and against these insecurities does come with multiple acts of kindness um, toward those who are suffering and also toward those who are aggressing and toward those who are causing the pain um, as well. So and that exists in so many different places of the world right now, doesn't it? I'm thinking of what the other um, comment was. Uh, th and this is very related. Um, the how do you just show kindness to someone who's being unkind to others? Um, sometimes we need to prioritize right? Who needs this the most in this moment? Right? And if somebody is receiving unkindness, for example, in a bullying or a um, harassment or situation where somebody's being, you know, violated uh, violently, um, sometimes it's clear, well, that person needs kindness in this moment, right? The aggressor, the person causing the harm, needs to be stopped. Right? And maybe even stopping that person is the act of kindness toward the other. Um, and so it's the very situational. But also, um, I think our attitude and our tone to the people causing harm can still be kind. Um, I'm not going to let you do this, for example. Um, if you were on the other side, I would protect you as well, right? Those, those can be um, expressions of kindness to somebody when we have to say stop fighting or mm -hmm. you know, pre protect, prevent and protect for somebody. Yes, yes. So James, and maybe you just want to take it one step further with Nithya's question here linked to the same. She says, what are your thoughts on kindness towards perpetrators of abuse or neglect of children. Um, and I think the child protection and child abuse issues are very big in South Africa, so. Uh, yeah. That's a good and a very deep question too. I, I think part, I guess the root of kindness 
I think comes in understanding that the perpetrator, the person who's being violent and has hurt other people has probably got to that place in life because they've been hurt as well. And so that's a complicated empathy that I can bring toward that person. Now, it doesn't mean that I will take or that we should take whatever legal and ethical steps to stop that harm from happening and maybe to sometimes remove somebody um, or to that, that law and that system has its place um, to handle somebody who's, who's been a perpetrator or caused that harm. But the root of it is understanding um, they're harming other people because most likely they've been harmed at some mm-hmm. point in their life. And so there's still a human being in there. There's still a, uh, a person in there and never forgetting that. Mm-hmm. Well. I think that in South Africa, that approach of restorative practices and restoring harmony between uh, perpetrator and, and and victim and trying to to bring some some healing uh, yeah. is is also uh, helpful helpful and it's and it's yeah, a kind but... it's a kinder approach to justice you know yeah, yeah that there is the hope of there is possibility of restoration that that person has good in them they have strengths mm-hmm. even though they might not be seen in that moment in that situation. And also, kindness doesn't mean that I'll let the victim and perpetrator be together again without support. Right? Kindness might mean I'm going to be in between you for now, together to guide and protect safety for both sides. Because, mm-hmm. you know, well, we might say not to confuse kindness with trust. <laughs> Mm. Right, the trust has to be earned. Um, kindness doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a hand up there, so let's actually have the person who's got your hand up ask you a question. You can put your camera on as well. Yeah. Um. Good day. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Okay, um, it's just a, a just a comment as well, you know, um, on being kind to a person. Um, I've seen this. Um, there's a lot of videos um, on social media that is going around. People trying to help people, making these videos, giving food on other people, you know, posting it mm. and then it goes viral. For me, which is that that's not being like showing kindness, that's exposing someone because most of the other um, situations that the people find themselves in is that like confidential. Um, there's another picture that um, that was like, it makes me like getting that picture of a child that was in the desert. You know, um, there's a photographer that was taking pictures and the child is like in the dry land and there's uh, vultures waiting, you know, for the to a child, yeah. which is for me that, exposing that child's you know um 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 um, um, you know situation it's like you trying to show the world that you are being kind you showing kindness to other people but at the same time is you know exposing that person you know instead of you trying to do something for that person and you know and then help that person go back to your home and then just tap yourself on the shoulder to say that okay yeah Today I've been kind to somebody. I made a change, other than having to go around and say, "Hey, do you know that the, what is it that I did to somebody else?" You know, I mean, that's not being kind. That's trying to show the world um, another picture of yourself. But you know, yeah. So I just wanted to put that cam, um, um, that thing on, and to what um, so James said earlier, being kind is not expecting something back. It's like you know, you're just having to give it with all your heart, and then you just you know, yeah. So I just want. We've lost you. Yeah, that's, that's such a great comment, though, is that um, sometimes people look for an audience. And um, I think that's what, you know, the, there's the idea that the more we can spread ideas and 
examples of kindness, you know, it may spark an idea for somebody else. And maybe that's at the root of some people sharing maybe a video of something they did. But, but at the same time, yeah, if we're looking for an audience and for um, comments back to us about how great our act of kindness was, it, it, we might have to question our motive a little bit. So I think that's such a keen observation that he has mm -hmm. um, expressed there. And what that means is that sometimes the most beautiful, profound acts of kindness are never seen by anyone else other than the giver and receiver. And um, I almost think that sounds like a bad thing, but I think that's what makes it beautiful is that it's, there's a privacy, a, a delicacy to it, that it doesn't have to be shared, um, you know, in, the, in that, that sort of way that, that he's expressing. So I think that's a very keen observation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Your hand, somebody else had a hand up. Anybody likes to speak? Go ahead. You can show your camera if you can. You can un let me know who we're talking to. If you can, that would be good. If not, go yes. continue. This is uh, Simon. I hope you can hear me. Go ahead. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, thank you. My question is on uh, uh, on the Chinese world, where, for example, you are in a airport and there's a small child really struggling with a heavy heavy luggage and you want to help and again with the changing world you are not expected to help so seeing a small child struggling with a heavy luggage or even in the worst case situation where you are smiling with a child and the parent thinks otherwise why are you even passing a smile to a child that you don't know so it puts child and you to care about us in a funny situation on what to show love or whether you can't be mistaken in other aspects. Yeah. Thank you. That was a little choppy there, but I, I think I've got it that you know, sometimes what we might, that impulse might be, oh, take that luggage and help them you know, might be one way, but that could, if, if I don't know them, that could be intrusive, right? So I might also just say, you know, um, you got this, you know, or sometimes that's tough. It might be a word of encouragement or simply a smile um, that could be that act of kindness as well. So I think that's why that reflection part is so important that we're not just We've lost James again for a minute. And while while we we're waiting for him to come back, maybe uh, uh, we've we've got a dot comment from Donald here. He says kindness can be a firm a firm standing up for someone. It's a very interesting point. He's referring to an uh, earlier comment made by by James. James, sorry, you got cut off for a bit. If you'd like to continue, I was just keeping it going. Yes. Yeah, we can keep going. I, I, I agree with you about Donald's uh, comment there that um, taking a firm stance for somebody can really say, I, I believe in you and I will hold you, you know, mm -hmm. accountable um, or I will, you know, not give up. Um, that firm stance is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so kindness then, what do you think about it? Uh, not you know, I know kindness is is an action, but it can be can be expressed completely separately of the person as well, if that is possible. So, for example, you observe, you observe a situation and you go and make a strong advocacy effort somewhere else in a in another environment, but that child is in your mind as you fight for something that impacts on everybody. Just a comment of that kind of kindness. Oh, that's a good good point is that sometimes um, and another part of the mystery of kindness 
um, the person that we're showing that kindness to may never know, right? Um, if you remove an obstacle down the path in front of somebody and they never experience that obstacle, then they never know of your act of kindness. Um, and sometimes that could be physically on a path, you know, or sometimes it could be legally as an advocate or working in, in changing a system or designing a program or creating a, a playground at a safe park. You know, you're doing those things ahead of them that they'll never see. And um, though that can still be a wonderful act of, of kindness and care. Mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed the comment about, um, you know, on a plane and putting the oxygen on the child first before yourself. And the real act of kindness is even um, preventing the need for the oxygen. Right? Mm -hmm. So anticipating ahead, how can we make this flight safe? You know, what can we do? How do we be prepared in emergency? But also, um, you know, prevent from getting to that emergency. And figuratively, that's in an airplane in the comment, mm -hmm. but that could be in a game of football on the field, you know, making sure that uh, the holes in the ground are filled before kids are running, mm -hmm. um, you know, on a very practical level. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that what, you, what, what, what you're saying as well, uh, Zama has captured it beautifully here and saying kindness is a universal language that can be understood by everyone. And uh, it, yes, I think that that we're beginning to understand kindness better through this opportunity with you. And I'm sure that we're going to to take it forward in in ways that are that are very special. There are some pictures somebody's put up showing examples of of kindness at very basic levels that they've that they've actually expressed uh, to children. Is there any comment? In there are many, many beautiful comments here, but we're not able to read them all. But I'm sure everybody else has. And I see some people are leaving us. Are there any, is anybody here want to make sure that your comment is heard? Would you like to just read it out or speak to it? Is there any last comment before we we, we round up and take, uh, yeah, take this message deep in our hearts as we as we leave the session? I'm asking for anybody now to, 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 Raise your hands and speak to your comment or raise a new question or comment. Maybe you could even tell uh, James, how do you think that uh, that this the session has impacted on you personally? Yeah, it's Thank lovely you. to see the <laughs> lovely to see the pictures, any that um, yeah, people are that somebody's already here as Bertha is sort of thinking through the lens of kindness at things yeah. they've seen recently and uh, show up in those pictures. Yes, and sometimes just to say that the detail that childcare workers put in, you know, they match colors and they put, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 the picture there, they, the little details that shows the, the caring and the kindness. We have a hand up here. Send a seaway is at you. You wanted to make a comment. Please do. The person who's got their hand up, Please unmute and show your face too. Unmute. Somebody was wanting to make a comment about how this has impacted on them. It's Sindiwe Melilo. Your hand is up. Can you please unmute? Will you try? There you go. Is there anybody else in the meanwhile who would like to make a comment? They may have changed their mind, it looks like. <laughs> I, I saw one question was asking about the slides, and um, you know, I'd be glad to send those to you if you wanted to share them with attendees. Yes. And so if I could just say as well uh, what we've done with all the webinars and we're really, really excited about this one as well is that 
we, for those who can't, couldn't make it for various reasons, some of them are looking after children who have come back from school today. So what we would do is that we would uh, send the, the, the video, uh, the, the recording of it with the PowerPoint presentation, and they would actually discuss it with others. So people will continue to benefit from this presentation, obviously, uh, with feedback from their colleagues. There you have, uh, 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 you're looking very beautiful. Do, 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 do share your comment. You must unmute. You have to unmute. No, we can't hear you. We're not able to hear you. You are speaking though, so unmute. No. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you're actually throwing a kiss and I think you're saying thank you very much for, for, <laughs> for, for hopefully. Are you ready now to try? No, that's not working. Is there anybody else? I'm sorry, if you can't hear you, then we're going to, yes, there's someone to, to unmute. Yeah, hi, good good afternoon, everyone. I just want to say that my act of kindness that I received today is that, make it soft, please, is that my tank have been filled just by listening to the season to go out there and perform more acts of kindness. So thank you to everyone for filling my tank. I thank you. Ah, beautiful. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you very Wonderful. much. Yeah, we can all yeah. we can all take that energy and take it into our day today. Thank you, uh, Richard. Did you want to say something as the last comment before we hand over to you, Chair? If not, over to you, Chair. Go ahead, Richard. I'm all good. I just want to say thank you once again from the bottom of my heart. And I know that each and every child you work at, each and every participant on this platform right now, they truly appreciate that because you know this profession that we're in is not one of the easiest, but I believe with kindness, it will sow the kin within us and it definitely needs to start with us as a person because I believe if I'm healthy as a person, I can create a healthy community within the sector, within the space that I'm working with. And so we pass on that thoughts of kindness and we break the cycle of violence, we break the cycle of negative energy just by being kind towards one another. I thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank Lovely. you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, James. I think you, you can see that you've touched, uh, you know, the 150 people that have been here uh, on, on this program and this webinar today. Uh, uh, Chair, would you like to go forward or is it uh, who is giving us the vote of thanks? Uh, yes, I just also want to mention uh, that we did not acknowledge our friends from Fitzay Africa. We did uh, welcome uh, and mention Peter Simon. I'm not sure if there's others uh, here in our list of people, that, but we did extend the invitation to all our uh, other colleagues on the African continent to also join this webinar. And we also would like to acknowledge them uh, that are with us. We will then call on uh, Desiree, our chairperson from the Western Cape, also to show an act of kindness to James, as she will and those delegates and uh, participants in our webinar, as she will then now do the vote of thanks. Uh, Desiree, we hand over to you, and if you can just also switch on your camera, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, a special word of thanks on behalf of the NACCW and our members. Um, please accept our sincere appreciation for the outstanding manner in which you conducted 
with your presentation, James. It was a real eye opener for us. Uh, I think what stood out for me is when you said, we say these kind words, but we're not really doing it. The act is more in doing. So yes, it's a self-reflection. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for sharing your time and experience with us. It was really informative, and I believe we benefit immediately from your presentation regarding um, leading kindness in child and youth care. We know that your time is precious and we are intensely grateful for you who were able to carve some time out to be with us. Um, thank you for helping making the Child and Youth Care Week a great success. Once again, thank you for your memorable, it will be a memory presentation. Um, I also would like to thank our directors for making this Child and Youth Care Week possible for us. And then last but not least, to all our attendees, thank you for your time and participation. It is highly appreciated. I know we still have got a few days to go, four more days, but um, yeah, today was a real great success. And um, we can just say thank you to our leadership. So once again, thank you very much, James, for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Desiree, for sharing with us and to share a word of appreciation to our uh, speaker, uh, James Freeman. Uh, and at this point, we would also then uh, appreciate James that uh, he's told us it's 4 a.m. there in California, getting up early to be with us. Uh, and he has also shared with us that he's happy for us to uh, be here. Thank you for showing up mentioned and it also means a lot for us in the child and youth care sector and it's the NECW for those that have come uh, to be with us and to share uh, and it James it means a lot for us you've sp you've spoken to our hearts and minds here this afternoon on our side uh, and we are happy that you are with us before we close and give you a chance to maybe share some large thoughts and comments, I'm just going to ask Zemi just to uh, enlighten us on our next webinar. We're having this on a monthly basis uh, to, sh to develop our uh, and advance our child and youth care profession uh, here in South Africa. Uh, Zemi, would you just before we give James the last yes. uh, for the last comments before we close? Yes. Uh, I just want to say that uh, it was going to be Professor Jim Anglin who's going to speak in our June webinar, and he's going to be speaking on trauma, pain, and healing in child and youth care. So I think we really look forward to that presentation. The date uh, uh, will be confirmed, and the, the 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 information will go out on social media. And we're just hoping, uh, uh, James, that maybe you will. Uh, sometime come back again because we know that you're taken over as the expert in the characteristics of child and youth care practice and that would be something that uh, South Africans would love to hear more about if you are available as well for another webinar in the year later after after you've had a break we would really appreciate that thank you sure. over to you chair thank you Zenny and and Elwin and, and Donald and everyone today and I would be happy to come back anytime. So um, uh, appreciate that invitation. And um, thank you so much for the chance today. It's been an honor to be a part of your series and to, to hear so much. And uh, as you heard of Jim Anglin's session coming up, don't miss that one. That'll be a, a good good time uh, for, for all as well. So um, yes, just remember that uh, kindness is that little shift that you create and how somebody sees their world and sees themselves. And uh, we can do that for, for our own selves as well. So, 
Thank you, Elwin, so much for the invitation and for um, letting me be part of your your um, series here and encouragement to uh, to all that you're doing. Thank you, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, on th that note, we will then close the session. And uh, James, may you have a good day going forward. We are in our going to sunset soon and we'll be arresting while you st will start uh, your day. Uh, yes. <laughs> thank Glad you. We can then. connect across um, the distance. So yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you thank ever, very much. Good people and goodbye for now. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.